play around with this back corner. I gotta do a cut and butt on this fella, do some finish welding there, and then tie in this entire back piece. Basically just put a nice plate, nice plate, and nice plate. Let's get that done. Hey, finish doing the piece work over on this end. Finish doing the piece work over on this end. And finish doing the piece work over on this end. So that's all good. Now, so I good that we took Old Blue apart actually when we did because I realized an issue that we have on the transmission tunnel. Let me show you. 90s transmission tunnel. This guy right here, my four wheel drive on the floor shifter is off to the side. Old Blue, he's right off that main part right there, off that, uh, that cap piece. So basically I gotta cap that small one off. Didn't know, either way. Quick cap, should turn out pretty good. Got that fella all welded in, forgot that corner piece. And then we got that guy all welded in. He's all capped up now, awesome. So what we gotta start focusing on is this intersection of the roof. So we got a double wall inside here. What I gotta do on this guy, I'm gonna go out to the brown cab and cut the roof, the inner roof off that fella. Cause we gotta basically graft him into here that's the plan anyway so i'm gonna grab the saws on it's gonna quickly cut that guy off i'll be right back because we're gonna have to graft him there and then make our inner panels all right painted it basically just in some cheap red that i had in a spray can just got to paint the underside because once we put that inner roof structure we're not getting back to it so i gotta let that guy dry because after we're gonna basically seam seal the holes and stuff from the underneath that we got to get to so let me let that guy dry but I'm gonna keep working on that frame in the meantime. All right, got the lengthening on. Still gotta basically wire wheel the whole thing. There's still a lot of the boogers on it. You know, the slag. A lot of that is just kinda, a lot of the drips, just chop them off. Either way, basically did a whole bunch of stitch welding to that. Realized I'm not as good with the stick welder as I thought going up and down. So had to basically do little stitches after my main pass. But we did the back side and the front side. She's all set. So that's the overall look <laughs> yes sir and again if we kind of go to the middle of that triangle to the middle of this triangle we're pretty much looking at like 34 33 inches something like that but you can see we got good penetration on both sides of the triangle both sides of the triangle etc etc so we're doing really really good not gonna lie all right so next thing we have to do is basically weld in our new section of pipe for our exhaust pipe. Got a little bit of welding there that I have to do too. It's been open for a long time. Either way, it's gonna quickly cut up a piece of pipe and we'll put them in the middle, tack them up. All right, so now that guy's all finished welded in. Finished the little cap up there that I need to do. So the exhaust is relatively done. Now there, I might add a exhaust hanger at the back down the road because there's really technically only one and then solid mount there. That's always been an old blue problem though, so I'm not too worried about that. Now, we're not gonna make a shaft on this because I don't have the tube that's long enough, is what it is. So this guy right here, basically, we're just gonna add whoop, up to there. I'm gonna measure it out. We're gonna have a drive shaft spot, do that. But basically, easiest way for me, we'll just square that guy up and we'll measure basically from this guy to that guy, just right off the cross, should be fine. So next thing we got to do, I got to push that guy in. It's always touched the back of the cab. As you can see, it's all beat in. There's a little bit of sledgehammer action. Nothing too crazy. Let me get the sledgehammer. We'll fix that up. Right. So I think what we're going to do is the first test fit of the cab. I got the drive shaft. We got him all measured up. I just got to take him off the truck. But I think what we're going to do, I'm going to clear this guy up a little bit. We'll see if the cab goes on. If it goes on, we might just bring the whole unit into the barn as opposed to rain literally for the entire week. So might not be a bad idea. Either way, there's only one way to try it. Let's see how we do. Now, are we really ready to put the cab on? No, not really. Because we still got to paint and all that stuff. But we're not about to lose an entire week to a wet frame out here. So if I can put the cab on there, then at least we can lift the cab off and do stuff inside but but i gotta put both together to fit it in there so that's the plan anyway let me clean up let's see how we go all right you can kind of already see what's gonna go down time to watch me struggle try to put a whole cab on a whole double cab on by myself 
let's see if uh, <laughs> this is going to be a good idea or not. And yes, I'm going to scratch up the bottom. It is what it is. Good thing about Rust-Oleum, you can always touch it up for like two cents. Awesome. All right, time to play the game. Let's see how we do. the old help of the engine crane across the two body mount holes. So we're gonna try that out and <laughs> see if it can lift that. So far, so good. And then we just gotta try to scoot her in. <laughs> that's big now mind you the body lines aren't gonna match up right now there's no body mounts in it the rubber parts but that gives us the general gist of just kind of the stance that we're gonna be dealing with here <laughs> awesome bad for a rough draft it's supposed to rain an entire bunch so i'm gonna opt to just kind of ratchet strap it to the truck to the frame right now so it doesn't fly off we're gonna clean up a little bit and try to ram jam that guy in here. We should have enough bay, I think. <laughs> now I gotta tell you something, there's nothing like pushing a quad cab diesel four wheel drive pickup in a building by yourself. Whoo wee. She's a long unit, yes sir. All right, so this guy's all dried up now. So I got a seam seal just on those pieces and then we can cap this guy off. All right, got the seam sealer up on the roof. Time to encase that guy in. I think what we're gonna have to do is just give her a trim right here. Oh. I think what we're gonna have to do is give it a nice little trim on both sides first. And then we can put our sheet steel in that we took off the brown cab, one and one, and then we just gotta fill in. All right, got the drive shaft off. I'm gonna take that guy down to the shop. Now, we've built drive shafts here before. They're not overly complicated, but one thing we're not equipped for is balancing and if you get a little bit of vibration at a certain speed, it's just, you know, kind of way she goes when you do a homemade drive shaft. We're going to get this guy professionally made and professionally balanced just so then we don't rattle our teeth to death because we're going to have a lot of seat time in this. It's not exactly a race car or, a, you know, just a toy. So I think uh, getting one done professionally is a good idea. Oh, you know what time it is. Check out this art, though. <laughs> awesome. All right, so we dropped off the drive shaft. They're gonna be working on that in the next couple days. It saves us from having to do it ourselves, saving us like one or two days of extra work, which is pretty good. Plus, they'll be able to balance it with their actual laves and everything. It's There's no problem making your own drive shaft if it's a toy or anything like that, but 
doing just the rock method, sometimes you get a small vibration. I'm gonna be putting a lot of miles on this truck. It's gonna be kind of a daily for the future years going down the road. So I think it's a wise idea to get the super professionals to do it. But either way, we'll head back down to the barn. We got a little bit more welding and stuff to do anyway. All right, so I've been tracing lines and basically I'm capping off that patch panel and I gotta trace some lines here, cut that guy off, put the patch panel in, and then we just got a little tiny piece there, a little tiny piece there, and a little tiny piece there. Let me bang that guy out, and then we can play around with this. Should work out. I basically got the whole fella all welded in. So that completes pretty much the actual bodywork steel-wise on the Mega Cab. Pretty big milestone. And that's pretty darn good. <laughs> Not gonna lie, because the uh, we're on a time crunch, as I said many times before. So what I gotta do now, I'm gonna do a little bit of grinding, not a whole lot, a lot of wire wheeling, and then we gotta vacuum the whole entire thing because we got a seam seal and paint. I'll bring you guys back when I'm done wire wheeling anyway. All right, got it pretty cleaned out. Now I'm gonna chase that with the seam sealer. I got what's left of the can and these tubes for basically the outer rockers or the inner rockers, I should say, the critical areas are gonna get these tubes, the rest is just gonna get the seam seal, and then we'll finish off on the roof if we got any extra, the inner roof anyway, the outer skin already has some on it. So that's the plan, let me finish that up, I'll bring you guys back. All righty, long night, 1241, got, uh, got work in the morning. But either way, got that guy all seam sealed up, floor, <laughs> floor and ceiling. I'm gonna start spraying some paint on it, and get that all squared up. I'll bring you guys in when it's the first coat's done. All right, let's take a look. Oh no, I forgot to tape and mask everything. Now my perfectly good cracked windshield is no good. Don't worry about that. We didn't mask off a single thing. All the windows are getting changed out anyway. Everything that got paint on it, it's getting changed out anyway, it's not a big deal. Let me show you guys how it turned out. Overall, she's blue. And that was the main goal, really. I kind of got the mixture a little wrong, but that's what you get when you paint at three o'clock in the morning. So uh, that's gonna dry anyway. And that basically completes the inside. Awesome. All right, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Hopefully that dries up in the morning and then we can continue on with what we gotta do. So this right here is the beam I gotta trim down. And the main reason why Basically, I have it jacked up right now, but when this is down, it's on my frame rails, and that's no good. So, I gotta trim this guy down. I'm thinking if I trim him down to an inch, it should work out for my body mounts on the back. So, I'm just gonna trim this guy down. Shouldn't really affect too much. I'll bring you guys back in a bit. All right, I got that guy cut, so he's no longer interfering. We got the body mounts, all four, all set up. So what we gotta do now, we'll hold off on the bed just a little bit. I'm gonna have to lift the bed just a touch, you know, not by a whole lot, just a little bit around the entire truck. That'll lift the bed up. That'll get that mounts all squared up. But now what we're gonna do, we gotta paint this frame the black. So I gotta grind and basically, so I gotta grind and paint, especially down where my welds are. We'll get that guy painted while he's easy to get to and all that stuff. And then we should be ready to start reassembling the front end. Little by little, we're getting her. All right, I got the frame all prepped up inside, outside, all that stuff. We're just gonna hit it quickly with some uh, Dupacolor primer, let that dry up. And then we're gonna hit it with black. Pretty simple. All right, there we go. Got the black frame rails. All cleaned up, all set up. Under here, same thing. We did the back half last year, so I don't need to do it this year. I could do it fresh, but I don't need to, so I'm not gonna. So we got that side done, that side done, that side done. Got that one all done. Awesome, really, can't go wrong with that. So now we gotta do the fuel lines, etc. So now I think it's time to start assembling our front end again. All right, so we're waiting for uh, paint to all dry up and all that good stuff, but it is working out pretty good. So now let's see about getting that front clip back onto this fella. 
There we go. Got the front clip piece back on. So now, time to put the fenders on. There we go. Getting her. Getting her done. So I just got to align all three now. So if you come out to the back here, you can see the back end of the cab slope down. The rest of it's pretty good, not gonna lie. So that back end needs to go up and then down the road, that whole bed needs to come up. There we go. Updated the grill to the 8182 grill. Eliminates the Ford badge right on the front. I think that looks a lot better. Oh yeah, that's looking good. I like it. Yep. There we go. Got the heater box all roughed in. Got my shifter all back in. Not too bad, not too bad. So now I gotta do the HVAC. Got the inner heater box all put in. So now I gotta work on the outside. All right, got the brake booster, master, slave cylinder. I guess that's actually the master cylinder. Brake pedal assembly, all that guy's inside. Let's put the accelerator pedal in. We're gonna hold off on the steering column just right now because we gotta do that brake work first. And again, this is kind of the brake line that was in there. You're not supposed to have junctions in these lines. They're good little fixes, but you're not supposed to. These must have been from the old timer that put them in. There's three junctions in about eight feet of line. <laughs> yes, sir. So we got the inner fenders in on both sides. As you can see, not too bad. We still have to put the harness in and everything. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna clean up the wiring and stuff that needs to happen in here. And then I think what we're gonna do is tackle the lift on that bed. It has to go up about an inch and a half in order to line up with our cab and stuff. Let me show you again. As you can see, just needs to go up just a little bit. Not a big problem. So that's gonna be what we're gonna be going at. Yes, sir. Oh, got the antenna in. Boing. So let's keep on moving on. All right, so we got the hood on. Hood's all on. So basically, so basically now from the front, looks like a truck. Awesome. You'll never know that it has virtually nothing on the back. <laughs> awesome. I think we're a little off on the hood when I did the body line. So as you can see, this guy, either the fender needs to go out, whatever, not a big deal. This one's really out. So it's making me think, because that side is in a little bit too, it's making me think that this rad support has to come out just a touch on that side and over just a touch. It's really hard to visualize it without doors on. So even though I said I wasn't going to put the doors on, I think I'm going to put the doors on. That way, I can visualize everything. I think it's going to work out. All right, first door on the mega cab. <laughs> yes, sir. Not perfect, but we got her pretty darn good. And it still needs some adjustment. But it opens and closes pretty good. Not bad. All right, we got the driver door on. A couple things that we learned while we put that guy on. Nothing too crazy. This part of the fender needs to go up. And it also proved our suspicion that this side here is inside a little bit too much. Based off of our gap right here. That's going to be fixed a little bit when it goes up. But a lot of it is this guy's too far back. And you can trace that over to here. Take a look at our hood. As you can see, it's too far back on the brad support. And then over here, he's just about right. So this whole corner here needs to come out like this and basically just kind of twist over to the side. We're gonna leave that door for right now. We'll save all the adjusting for later down the road. Let's get the white doors on. We're gonna start out with this guy right here. There we go. Got the door on this side. So basically, if you looked at the truck from this end, that gives you the rough idea. Minus the bed needs to go up and all that stuff. But all the panels are now on. Which are pretty good. Everything still needs to be tweaked and adjusted and moved around and all that stuff. But overall, not too bad. Not too bad at all. And when we start the bodywork on these panel pieces, grinding and all that stuff, we're going to address the doors on these guys because these were set up these white doors were set up for the same type of west coast mirrors that were on this guy so basically just gotta finagle that guy out of her but not too bad really i'm quite happy with it at least for our first iteration so now we got to start working on that door all right got the white door on out on the back 
And I'll bring you guys in. Need some adjustment, much like everything else. We're just kind of putting the panels on right now. But as you can see, fun fact on this one, there's a lot of Bondo on this door. I didn't know. That's about, I don't know, a little bit over quarter inch. Not too bad, but that happened. When they opened the door, it crinkled. It would have been on that fender. Crinkled on that guy. And that's what put the dent in, and then they bondoed over it. We're going to try to avoid stuff like that. Got a little bit of a gap here. Basically, what I have on this side is the hinge section itself has to move that way. Just a little bit. Overall, though, not too bad, really. And as you can see, that's our gap there. So this whole bed has to come up. But overall, not too bad. And yeah, that's a that's a big old truck. <laughs> Yes, sir. It's pretty good. We have pretty much every major body panel back on this truck. Need a lot of adjustment. Again, the rad support pretty much needs to come out this way and off to the left, really. If I'm facing you, that would be your right. That door has to move back. A couple doors have to get adjusted. Fenders have to get adjusted. The bed has to go up an inch and a half to match the lift that's on the cab. So we got a little bit of fiddling around with the body yet. And then we still have the dually fenders that have to go on, but that's only if the dually hubs actually fit on this 10 and a quarter. Either way, I think that's a really good ending point for this video. So let's look over the truck real quick and see how we did. That's the front of the truck. That's the side of the truck. That's the other side of the truck. And then that's the back of the truck. <laughs> so next yes, video, we've got a lot of stuff to do. Basically body-wise, if we want to tackle it that way, or maybe we'll go full mechanical and make it so then this truck can run and drive again. Basically, leave the body panels till we do the body work. It is how it is, but let me know what you guys would rather see. Would you rather see at the end of next video, Old Blue out driving around, maybe in the field and stuff like that, kind of the state that it's in right now, but running and driving and all that good stuff? Or would you rather see the body work portion of it, get the panels all readjusted, the doors all adjusted, Maybe that dually rear-ended, and maybe we'll even put the new tires on it. There's new tires coming. Let me know what you guys want to see, but that's going to do it for this portion of the Mega Cab. Big milestone. It looks like a truck again. That's awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys very, very soon in the next one. <laughs> see ya.